Welcome to r slash am I the jerk, where a wild Karen has some really sticky fingers. My girlfriend's sister keeps stealing my stuff and they all think it's funny. I've been visiting my girlfriend's house and her sister, who's 12, has stolen my phone, my keys, my watch, etc. She likes to hide my stuff and gives me clues on where to find it all. My girlfriend and her family seem to think this is charming and adorable, but I just find it really annoying when I'm trying to dig my phone out from behind the fridge because she decided to put it there. Her sister justifies it by saying that she deserves my stuff more and I can win it back. I just find it bizarre her parents aren't really doing anything about it. I talked to my girlfriend about it and I said her sister was being a brat by stealing all of my stuff and hiding it and it's really getting on my nerves. I don't find it funny like they do. I also said I don't like that her parents are okay with it. My girlfriend said that I was being too harsh. She's just a kid and she's just doing what kids do. She said she's not being a brat and you can't get mad at a kid for acting like a kid. I don't get this at all because I wasn't stealing people's stuff when I was a kid. Kids can know how to behave, but I also grew up with strict parents. If I behaved that way with a guest, my parents would have been upset. So I told her the first part and I said I don't care if she's a kid. She needs to stop stealing my stuff and give back what she stole. She said she thinks I'm being unreasonable, expecting her sister to act like she's an adult but she'll talk to her parents, but it's hard to get her to behave because she's so young. So yeah, she doesn't seem happy that I'm annoyed by her sister. Am I the jerk here? Not the jerk. While I see where the family is coming from, hey look, sister is so accepting of you that she's engaging in the behavior she does with us. Isn't that a good thing? But you're saying that you really want her to find another way to accept you without playing games. It's good practice for her out in the real world where roommates and coworkers won't put up with that. Also, that crack about deserving your stuff more makes her sound entitled. She doesn't deserve anyone's stuff. She needs to work on this before she messes around and finds out. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or his girlfriend's family? Please let us know. Never voluntarily hang out in places where you are disrespected. I'm leaving my boyfriend because of a prenup. I, 34 female, am breaking up with my boyfriend, who's 34 male, because of a prenup. I've been with my boyfriend for about two years. Everything is going well and we love each other. We've been discussing marriage and he mentioned he would not marry me without a prenup. We discussed this in detail and I didn't like what he proposed. His family owns a lot of property, land, and has lots of savings. After marriage, he wants me to move into one of the houses his parents own. I told him I'm uncomfortable building a life and a family in a house that I have no ownership of and he didn't understand. I told him I'd prefer to rent a place together or we can live temporarily in one of his parents' houses and look at property together, but he refused. He said he liked the houses his parents already owned. He said he would not buy other property. He said he would not sell any of his property to buy one with me. He told me if I wanted my own property, I could save up money by living in one of these properties and invest in one myself. The problem is, he would be entitled to half if we divorce since my purchase would happen after our marriage. He told me I could pay his parents' rent if I feel like I don't belong on the property. He told me I could buy half of the house we live in from his parents. The problem is, I don't like the houses that he or his parents own. They also have a lot of stuff and I feel like there's no space for me. I want to look at houses, I want to pick the place I live, and I want to do that with my partner. I've made this clear to him over and over, but he won't budge. He earns more than me and he has more assets than me for sure. He made it clear that he was afraid I was a gold digger and he wants to protect himself and his family's assets for me, which I can't understand. This whole thing has made me feel very weird. This topic has come up before and it's always made me feel very small. It makes me feel like all he cares about are his assets. It makes me feel like he wants me as long as I fit into the life he already built and doesn't care to build one with me. It makes me feel like a gold digger. He has enough money to retire right now and live comfortably. I don't. He basically told me that whatever money he earns now, he can spend, so he won't be investing in too much anymore. He expects our earnings and our savings after marriage to be split, which I feel off about. I'm sure this is normal for some people. I'm sure other people would be happy to be with someone who is well off, but I'm not. I want someone beside me building a life with me, not someone who has built a life with his parents and wants me as long as I behave and fit into his life, which is how he's been making me feel. So I'm leaving him. I welcome opinions on this, but yeah, it's been too long that this has made me feel off about our relationship. I'm protecting my peace and leaving him with all of his houses and money.
Additional info. He mentioned prenups very early and I would keep asking him about the details, but he would keep it very vague and assure me that we would work it out when the time came. I never asked him about his assets and I never actually knew how much assets his family had. The only things I knew were from some of the one-off comments about certain assets, if he mentioned this tenant or that tenant, or this thing they have to repair, etc. I had also initiated these conversations. He mentioned wanting to live with me and work towards marriage. I figured then that this time had come. This is when I set him down and asked him what he expected from me, what he wanted, and to clarify the conditions of any prenups he wanted to propose. He still tried to dodge my inquiry. It took so long for me to pull this information out of him. I guess I did wait two years, but marriage talk seemed like the right time to push him to discuss it. Update. Before I start, here's some important context. I have a stable and rewarding career, and though I don't earn as much as him, I'm very happy with what I can afford. My parents have always taught me that women should be independent, and I've taken that to heart. I live below my means, which has allowed me to put aside money for savings and investments. A lot of comments have mentioned that I should take the free rent and that it would somehow set me forward in life, but for me, giving up my sense of autonomy and control over my home, my safe space, is not worth the potential savings. I lived with my parents and saved aggressively until I was 30, so I'm lucky enough to be in a position where I can comfortably afford rent or a mortgage by myself. Plus, he expected the living situation to be permanent. I would not move into a house owned by someone else just to save on rent. Would it be nice to save $2,000 a month? Sure, but most people pay rent and I'm not an exception. If I really wanted that, I could move back in with my parents. But again, autonomy is very important to me. If he's this stubborn now, I don't see how this situation could be improved later after I already moved in. I could also counter the prenup and make it so all of my accumulated assets stay mine and put in a clause that I'll be compensated for any kids we have or put that I'd get alimony or at least have a roof over my head in case we divorce. But for me, that feels overly transactional. It also gives me the vibes that I'm going to be living with a roommate who I hook up with and have babies with, not a partner. I prefer to feel like we're in it together. He can keep what was his, but I want to build up what is ours. Also, if everything is completely split, it'll open up a new can of worms. How will our expenses be split if I'm working and he's just chilling? What happens when we have kids? He has money saved for them, but will I get a say in how we spend that money? I know these can be worked out, but this is not the type of marriage that I want. I can't predict everything that will happen, and I don't think I can capture it in a contract. And it's already been so heartbreaking for me. I don't want to go through more. Anyways, I'll just say that it feels like I was being stripped of my autonomy, stonewalled, and treated like a hostel. So I told him I needed to end this relationship. I appreciated and truly enjoyed my time with him, but our financial values and the preferred married lifestyle just don't match. It was a quick and easy conversation, to be honest. I expected the breakup to be a bit of a process, not a one and done thing since our lives overlap so much. I'm also in contact with a lot of his family, so of course, during this whole time, a lot of them got involved, blah, blah, blah. I do love his parents. I had a great relationship with them. I would go over to their house, we would have food, chat, watch TV. Sometimes I would go to the parties they host without my ex if he was busy. A few days after my talk with my ex, I went over to say goodbye. I didn't know if the prenup was family enforced or not, so I kept it very general and mainly focused on how the situation made me feel and what I was looking for in a relationship. His parents were shocked when I told them why I was leaving. I'm going to bullet point the rest. His parents really wanted grandbabies. However, ex's younger brother and sister-in-law don't want kids. They were so happy when I came into their lives and found out that I wanted kids. His parents had created their wealth together with his dad being the major breadwinner for most of the relationship. His mom was shocked at what he was offering me, saying those aren't the values he was raised with. She has been effectively retired for almost 15 years, and she said ex's dad never made her feel uncomfortable because of the difference in earning potential. They told me that they built their assets for themselves and their kids. They said that includes whoever their kids decided to share their lives with. They also have enough investments that they can live off of those. They told me their plan was to sign over a house of our choosing as a wedding gift, or sell a house and give us cash so we could buy a house together. As they got older, they planned to evenly divide their properties between my ex and his brother, since they wouldn't want to manage the properties anymore and live off investments. Ex's mom said that she would have made sure my name was on my ex's portion, especially since we were wanting to have kids. They mentioned investments will go directly into funds for grandkids after their passing. Maybe this is what my ex was referring to when he said his kids would be set. 
X's mom told me that the mother of her grandbabies would be taken care of and she wanted us to be on equal footing while raising a family. To be honest, this conversation was kind of like a weight off my chest. I always loved his family and never felt excluded, but the prenup talks left me confused and hurt. What they said fit with what I knew from my ex and them before. I'd be lying if I said I didn't start imagining this life. I talked to my ex again. Basically, he told me his dad had joked before about how he hoped he and his brother would not find gold diggers, and that's where that comment came from. He felt responsibility to protect his parents' assets, since he didn't feel entitled to them, so by extension, I wasn't entitled either. In his culture, sons carry on the family line, so he felt he had to keep his assets in the family line, which I'm not a part of, but any sons we had would be. Most of the assets he's worried about are under his parents' name, and he had never asked for their opinion on what to do. He just did what he thought he should. He also said he isn't that well off and that his assets shouldn't come between us. This is still confusing to me. Isn't this whole thing because he was well off and wanted to hold on to what he had and not create a shared lifestyle? I think maybe he meant he didn't own much and most things actually were under his parents' name. He felt he was punching above his weight with me and was scared I would leave him. He was afraid I was with him because of his finances since that was the only thing he had more of, whereas he said I'm intelligent, hardworking, beautiful, etc. He was scared about moving forward with a relationship, but instead of communicating, he became defensive. To me, it seems like he said and did these things because he was feeling deeply insecure. He had made a couple of passing comments about me being more beautiful than him or how I'm more hardworking, etc., but I had always taken them as compliments, not self-deprecating comments towards himself. He's such a caring, funny, and intelligent person, just in a different way than me. Also, I know he's not as confident as he comes across, but I had no idea that his insecurities ran this deep. He also apologized over and over about how he didn't mean to make me feel like an outsider to him and his parents and insisted that he wanted to share life with me. He said his insecurities and fear got the best of him and he didn't handle it well. He had taken advantage of my patience and lashed out because he felt inadequate and scared. It broke my heart because I think all of this could have been avoided. We've been through this song and dance before many times where he would feel some sort of way, then act out as he's processing it. Until now, I always stayed through it and we moved on but it's never gone on for so long. But I guess the issues we faced before were smaller compared to mapping out our whole lives. I've pushed him to seek individual counseling and we've attended couples counseling together, but I can't force him to sit and identify his emotions or employ the tools we were taught. The prenup conversation happened over a long period of time. He had so many chances to pump the brakes and reflect on what he was saying and simply just listen to me, but he didn't. He then sat in front of me saying that everything he said before was not what he meant. He said he would be happy to take care of me and our future kids. We could buy a house together or rent if we wanted to because now he wasn't scared about creating a life together, complete opposite to everything he had been saying. But how unsettling it is that he seemed so completely comfortable and confident in his hurtful words he previously said and was okay with placing me in a very unequal position in the relationship. Despite me continuously trying to articulate what I wanted and how he was making me feel, he didn't even consider my side over months. I know I have a good deal with what his parents are offering, and I know he and I get along super well, but I'm not marrying his parents. I can't have his mom with us during every argument or life decision we make. Thinking back, I can count on one hand where we've run into issues, and he was able to address it without acting up. He's such a nice guy, but I can't be his garbage bin every time he needs to sort out his feelings. It's already worn me down. He's a grown man. He's intelligent and intuitive. He's had two years to learn how to communicate with me and he's not. I honestly can't tell if what he said to me is genuine or coming from his parents or coming from a fear of losing me. I could give him the benefit of the doubt again and move forward with the relationship as I've done in the past, but I'm tired. I think this is a fixable problem, but I also have not seen any improvement since we started dating. If anything, this prolonged experience has made me feel it's gotten worse. I will not make the mistake of investing in a man because of what he could be instead of who he is. If the last few months are a testament to how he handles stressful situations, I can only take things as they are and assume they won't change. This whole thing has left me sour. I don't need too much, but I do expect to be treated with love and support, even during times of disagreement. I can't just forget the feelings and words I felt and heard over the last couple of months. I can't just unhear and unknow that he's afraid I'm a gold digger. That was just one of many comments that really hurt me. I think life will have a lot more ups and downs, and I can't imagine what kind of difficulties we'll face if this is how we communicate, even after identifying it and working on it in therapy. For these reasons, I'm choosing to walk away. 
Very different from leaving because of a prenup, but it is leaving nonetheless. And to be honest, this hurts more. I know it will hurt for a while, but I pray I'll be avoiding heartache and complications in the future. Who knows? If it was meant to be, maybe we'll find our way back together. For now, I told him and his family that I need space and time. I know this seems like I'm giving up a lot, but of course, there are things I can't put into a post. Edit. I actually wrote the above quite early, but I didn't post it because I didn't feel like it was over. But now, after this time, I know it is. It's been tough, and it's only been a couple of months, but I'm sure I made the right call. It's tough watching everyone coupled up and having kids, but it is what it is. I'm proud of myself for leaving, and I'm slowly healing. He was right in one thing, though. She is, in fact, too good for him. And it must hurt him that even his parents know that she's too good for him and why they broke up. Hence, his parents will always be ashamed and disappointed in him going forward, especially since they wanted grandkids and OP was willing to have kids. Plus, they both like her as a person and her financial thought process was similar to the parents. It's tragic how someone in such a ridiculously good situation handed to them on a silver platter just completely nukes it for the dumbest reasons possible. His parents must be so upset. OP's ex is the kind of stupid where the family wealth is on its way to being eradicated by the third generation. I guess I'm a weirdo because I feel like a prenup isn't a problem at all. If I married a rich woman, I would gladly sign a prenup. I'm not expecting her assets to be mine. I do expect her assets to go to our kids though along with mine. They both have different way to view a relationship so it's different values. A gap that big, you need a prenup in my opinion. I've heard so many stories about people getting done over in divorce, even having two of my friends as examples. I don't think a prenup is crazy at all. I was raised by a single mom and even she told me to get a prenup if I ever get married since courts wouldn't favor me. Did you read only the title before commenting? Because if you read this whole thing and this was your takeaway, then you should go back to school for reading comprehension. This story is BS. OP can keep her earnings separate and invest it for herself. A prenup can give her everything she claims she wants. She doesn't want him unless she gets his stuff too. She doesn't want him because he's a callous jerk who lashes out in stressful situations and doesn't put any equity at all in her feelings and opinions. If you read the post, you'd know it's not just about the money. After the breakup, he even offered her everything she wanted, which she declined. That's not what gold diggers do. She could have had it her way money-wise, but it wasn't about the money. This dude dodged a major bullet. She sounds awful. As someone who's in law school, why on earth would I want you to have equal claim to the fruits of my labor when they were earned doing something my partner couldn't do and didn't help me with? What entitles them to benefit off of my work? Hopefully bro can find a girl who isn't a gold digger for real. As a lawyer, you're an idiot that gives us a bad name. Prenups protect assets held before marriage and inheritance. Neither apply. The ex did not own any of those properties. When his parents passed, if the parents wanted them to go to their son and their son only, OP would not have any claim. What OP wanted was for them to purchase a new home that they would own together. You clearly lack reading comprehension skills and you're completely ignorant of the law. Stop throwing your so-called law school education around like that means you know anything. You're wrong in every aspect. Man children like you should not become lawyers. My wife has scammed multiple people on Facebook and she lied to me about it. So about a week ago, I got this Facebook message from some lady saying that my wife scammed her out of some money shipping baby clothes. I went to my wife about it before talking to the lady and my wife said, I've never seen this lady in my whole life. She's just trying to get you to send her $30. She then went on to block the lady and that was that. Well, this morning I got a message request from a different lady saying how my wife scammed her also out of $120 and she sent me screenshots of her and my wife's conversation and transactions. I unblocked the other lady and she also sent me conversations and transactions. And apparently there are others as well. So I now have three ladies in my DMs with proof that my wife scammed them out of money, lied to them about having a miscarriage and said that she was on bed rest and couldn't. She's at work as a bartender right now. She's not on bed rest. The thing that irks me the most is how quick she was to lie to me and block the lady. It just didn't feel right. But I thought, oh well, she wouldn't lie to me about something like this. Now I'm just sitting here wondering how much more she's lied to me about and I don't feel like I can even trust her anymore. My wife doesn't know that I have all of this information. Any idea what I should do next? Her reaction is a bit sus. She just said, I've never seen her before. She's trying to get money from you. I'd be like, what? 
Who is this? Why do they think that? Give me their details so I can clear this up. I'd put a hold on my credit and check all of my accounts, to be honest. If it turns out she's really doing this, I'd find a divorce attorney. If these people are genuine victims and they found you, they can also find friends, family, and employers. OP. Her reaction was what drove me to believe these people. Took my phone and blocked this lady and denied, denied, denied. But from the messages this lady had with my wife, I fully believe that my wife has been scamming people. And on top, she lied to them, said that I had shipped their packages, lied and said she had a miscarriage and had to be bedridden, and basically just tried to play the victim the entire time when she had no intentions of giving this lady her stuff. She even sold her some clothing that she had already given to somebody else. And how quick she was to block the lady is what I found suspicious, but I didn't do anything because I believed her. Apparently, the original lady made a post on some mom's group Facebook page, and that's how they all found me. Plus, like a week ago, my wife just randomly deleted her Facebook account, and it all lines up perfectly for when the original lady threatened to make a public post about my wife. They paid her on a PayPal that isn't her actual PayPal. She's at work right now, but I'm going to try to do more digging into this later. But basically, that whole Facebook group has my wife on a no-sell list, because this isn't the first time this has happened, apparently. The original lady who contacted me invited me and showed me the public post that she made shaming my wife for what she did. Talk to her about why she's doing it and what else she's lied about. She should be worried about the police too. OP, I don't think she'll be honest at this point. I was invited to the Facebook group my wife sold all of this stuff in and they have a whole like three posts talking about how she's on a ban list and she's cheated other people out of their money too. Update, I confronted my wife with all of the evidence that she's absolutely guilty of doing this including the money trail, and I had my phone recording everything and a hidden security camera going to watch it all, and she still denied it, and then told me that I was a joke of a husband for not believing her in this whole ordeal. And she continued to go off on me for 45 minutes and just say awful things. Anytime I would bring up a point, she would just dismiss it and continue to gaslight me. So I'm taking my two-year-old with me, and we're going to my buddy's house for the rest of the week. Am I the jerk for dismissing my rude daughter's feelings? Am I out of line? I'm female 45 and my daughter is 18. Recently, I just lost my aunt. My daughter has always been a closed off and reserved person. However, she's a little immature when she doesn't get what she wants and is very snide and in your face sometimes during these occasions. When my aunt passed, my sister came over and has been here ever since, for about four weeks now, when we arranged the funeral and reception. My daughter did not cry or look upset at all, even though she had sometimes go to look after her great aunt on the days her great uncle needed to go out since she was bedbound and completely paralyzed and unable to speak. You'd expect some sort of reaction, right? But she had none. She'd avoid her great aunt a lot, and she never even talked to me about her. For this reason, I assumed she was just detached as a lot of kids usually are and left her alone. However, since her aunt came to stay with us and brought her three kids, she's been very bratty and complains when she has to clean up after them because they're quite spoiled. She's like this every time they come to stay because my sister is quite an unhygienic person and she and her kids have had lice for years. She didn't say anything to them since my aunt is grieving, so she hides in her room for the whole day because she feels stuffy and repulsed, always asking me when will they leave. I understand why she feels this way. I don't like how the kids and my sister crowd my home and they don't clean up after themselves, but they're family and we're grieving even if she's not. She even hated the reception, not serving the guests, family and family friends, and looked annoyed when I told her so. And she said she just wanted to sit there. It was very embarrassing for me. All she needed to do was hand out water. I told her not to be so mean, as their family and her aunt is grieving. But she, being immature, narrowed her eyes at me and told me she feels trapped in this house, wanting space, before she went back to her room. Even when I asked her to come downstairs and spend time with me. She's usually very sweet, smart and mature, even emotionally, and very perceptive. But for the past few weeks, she's been more reclusive and bratty than usual even more so than other times when her aunt has been around. Am I right in being dismissive of her attitude and feelings? It seems to me, as of recently, there's been a bad change in her. Even if she doesn't care about her great aunt passing, someone who has taken care of her before developing this illness and who she's known since she was young, she should at least think of her aunt's needs. Honestly, I'm quite annoyed. My mother told me I should just leave her alone to herself, but she needs to be kinder. Edit. I admit that tradition has influenced a lot of my decisions and my own personality and that has in turn affected my daughter as much as I ignored it. I'll be having a long discussion with my sister about her problems, trying to sort out her hygiene as well and making her go back home and giving my daughter a much needed apology.
I don't want to lose her, as many of you had pointed out, that the longer I continue on this route, the higher the likelihood she'll cut me off. I'll talk to her, and I'll try to help her out however she needs me to. Unfortunately, I'm not in America, but I have called the social services on my sister before, and they closed the case after a very short investigation. I will not be calling them again due to their terrible service, but I will force my sister to get her act together by completely barring her from my house until she takes my advice. Only until she has begun to take care of her own kids will I allow her near my own. I will also be trying my best to earn my daughter's forgiveness. You're the jerk. It isn't your daughter's job to be an unpaid maid to a family so unhygienic they carry lice. That's absolutely repulsive and places your entire household at risk. And obviously, it isn't just their grief if this is how they live. I wouldn't want to be around that level of illness or neglect either. Why don't you try cleaning up after them and get lice and see how you like it? And also... Who likes a funeral reception? What kind of demented better homes and gardens party planet are you living on? Stop alienating your daughter for no reason because family is no excuse for what you describe. You're the jerk. I ignored my husband so much that he went away without telling me. I, Carla, 30, am six months pregnant with mine and my husband's, Harry, 31, first baby. During this pregnancy, I've been very exhausted every day and would usually come home from work and go to bed an hour later. Then I'd wake up at midnight and reheat whatever Harry had made us for dinner. For context, I've been part of a huge work project that's been going on for months and I've been extremely overworked. On top of this, my husband doesn't have a job at this moment and isn't looking for one unless I remind him to. I've been working overtime to get as much money as I can before maternity leave. Our anniversary was on the 6th of August and I'd asked him if we could have a romantic dinner at home and then snuggle up to watch TV under a warm blanket. I thought it was a wonderful idea since I was too tired to go out and because I knew that Harry was doing most, if not all, of the household chores. However, he seemed a little annoyed when he agreed, but I thought nothing of it. The next morning, Harry seemed quite cold towards me and barely looked me in the eyes. Once I got home from work, he wasn't there, but that was normal since he could have been out with friends or at an interview, and so I went to sleep. I woke up at 11 that night to see that I was still alone in the house, so I checked my phone. I had about eight missed calls from Harry and a long text. I'm summarizing, but the text read, I understand how tired you are because of this pregnancy and you having to work extra hours most days, but I'm over being ignored every day and having a five minute conversation with you every so often. You expect me to do all the housework and plan our boring anniversary alone. I'm really annoyed, so I'm staying at a friend's tonight. Text me when you see this. Of course, I called and texted him about being sorry and wanting to talk, but I never got an answer. In the morning, I called my boss about having a day off and spent most of it waiting for Harry and planning my apology. However, when he came home, he silently handed me a rose and a card saying that he loves me but needs a few days away from me to figure out what he's going to say and do. Then, those days became a week. This part happened on the 13th, eight days later. I messaged him every day and he would constantly say he needed one more day or just another night at his friends to figure all of this out. But on the 13th, I decided to go to his friend's house who he was staying with to confront him. So I drove over, nearly 30 minutes away, and banged on the door so hard that I could hear it echo from the inside. By this point, I'd realized that I should have put in more effort to our relationship. But he also should have talked to me about this instead of just running away. Harry's friend came to the door and was confused but pleased to see me. He seemed a little on edge as I talked to him and he had to break the silence every so often with comments about my pregnancy and how he couldn't wait to meet the baby. Finally, we stopped talking and I practically demanded to see Harry, saying that I wanted to apologize but also explain how childish he was being by hiding from me. The thing that I found absolutely hilarious, but actually not at all, was that his friend said that Harry wasn't there and had left for Ireland on the 9th. Ireland! To say I was absolutely furious and extremely confused would be such an understatement. His friend invited me in and we sat down to talk. Turns out that Harry had told his friend of our problems and had come up with a solution of going on a holiday as a couple to sort everything out and learn to love each other again, in Harry's words. So of course, his friend thought this was a lovely idea and helped him book the flight on the evening of the 5th, the first time he had stayed at his friend's house. Since it was a last minute booking, Harry's friend had stayed up with him for quite a while before they found a flight who was taking a few more passengers due to cancel tickets. His friend then explained how he had been confused when I arrived at the door but didn't want to say anything about the holiday in case it had ended early due to us arguing. Harry's return ticket is booked for the 20th of August. I'm just so angry and quite heartbroken to be honest. I messaged him the moment his friend had finished talking and Harry only responded an hour ago with nothing more than a had to figure things out, sorry. 
So now I'm home alone again and trying to figure out what I'm going to do or say when he gets home. Anyway, thanks for reading about how my life is going. Side note, I'm from the UK, so Ireland isn't as far as people think since I'm not American, but it still is far. Other side note, a question that keeps repeating is, where did he get the money from without you noticing? So I'll go ahead and explain that. He has a bank account with his money from when he worked as a teenager and a little into his 20s before we met. And a few years ago, we agreed not to touch that money and add to it every so often. It was a backup, backup savings account. So I'm assuming that he took the money from there since it wasn't from the joint account. Edit, six hours later. I knew this post would get attention, but I assumed it would only be a little. I've never used Reddit before, but I've seen it on TikTok a few times. So I thought posts only become popular on there. I was upset when I posted this and didn't think about how I'd handle all of the judgments and conspiracies once I'd calmed down. I appreciate the hard truths, empathy, and or advice given to me here, but I'm not divorcing him, changing the locks, or calling a lawyer or anything like that. Update. It's the 17th now. I've had a longer time to think. I'm not deciding anything until our talk, but I definitely won't be staying in my home with him after this. I can't trust him to not run away again. I'll talk more about this on my actual update, but I've gained some self-respect and I'm realizing that he's being the jerk. I talked to my mom and she's happy for me to move in with her on the 21st and I'm free to stay for as long as I need to. How many tickets did he book? Is he alone? OP. Two tickets as far as his friend knows and I don't know who he took with him, but I'd like to assume it's a different friend or a relative or that it just wasn't used. Guess I'd be waiting at the airport with a sign with his name on it. Just stand there casually and tell him that you're his ride. Imagine if the affair partner doesn't know that he's married and his wife is pregnant. She's going to be shocked when she sees you. Yeah, either he went with a girlfriend who gets to meet the pregnant wife or he went alone because he was super sad and seeing her there waiting for him might be a good way to get started on repairing their... Yeah, sure, he totally went alone, didn't he? Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or Harry? Please let us know. Harry should have studied harder at Hogwarts. He's really not doing this life thing right. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist, where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you, based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.